Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Back on the podcast, we have Rohit Srivastav. He is the Chief Investment Officer and Portfolio Manager for Saroj and Banu Fund. We're going to be talking about his AI-based technical analysis with predictive analytics, discussing what last week was a surprise drop, maybe uh, coming up with some new support levels. We'll have to wait and see. But of course, this is for entertainment purposes only. Thanks, uh, Josh. And uh, today I want to focus on AI balanced weighted index. And uh, I'll, I'll jump into what really I mean. But before that, I want to just let uh, our viewers know this is all for entertainment. This is all for um, learning perspective. And we do invest using these fundamentals, but we, we're not at a position to keep advising people about what to buy and what to sell. Um, giving you a list of all these talks, then these all are NASDAQ and NYSC. Uh, only listed stock. Uh, I personally don't uh, believe in the OTC stocks, even though there are a lot of them are legit, but it's just uh, safer from uh, investors and my investors perspective that do not invest in any of the OTC. Uh, and uh, we've been talking like last couple of months, we have been talking about this equally weighted index and it has a great value. And the whole value about an equally weighted index is that it, uh, it, it tells us exactly about uh, how each of the equities are doing. It gives an idea about how the cannabis industry itself is doing. And even though uh, there, there is the price value which we have defined, there's a cash in and cash out which tells us exactly how much money is basically coming out of the market or how much money is from getting into, into this industry. And that's why a weight, equally weighted index on all of these has a great value for us. Uh, like, like we have been trying to gauge from all this time that when to get into the market and when not to get into the market. And using the cash flow, like last week, we saw that there was a huge drop of, uh, of the cash going out, out of, out of, this, out of this, uh, the whole cannabis in, industry. So we saw that. And that is where the balanced weighted index is such an important tool to invest and see which, how much you should invest into each of these. Equities. Let me give you an example, starting with SP 500. I mean, this is not this is not something which we are doing new. This is like every industry, every every ETF and different funds they do a similar model, which is like if you take SP 500, about 31.2 percent is invested into information technology, and that's based on there is based on what's what's happening, which is the hot market, which of these stocks uh, the the industry has the highest growth, and they. Uh, bring in new companies and take out new companies based on that. And 31.2% of the of the total investment is into information technology. Similarly, we want to invest into variable equities with different sizes. So uh, giving you an example about PMD. Now, PMD is a, a $50 million market cap company. About on a daily transaction, it's about $190,000, which is really very low. Right. And what really it means is the total investments. And I, I picked up this low one to just give an idea about, you know, with this industry, is, uh, this uh, cannabis industry is small and in investing into this, uh, all of this is, is, has a great potential, but I still want to be pretty careful in that. And this is why. And that is like the total investment on this stock on, by all investors in this on a daily basis is about 990,000. It's, it's puny. It's nothing. And what it really means is if we invest anything more than uh, 10%, which is about 19 to like 19 to 19 thousand dollars, what what has what it has the potential it has is it has a potential of losing money. And the way they're losing money is that it will move the market, and there there might be um, uh, investors who are waiting to pull money back from that, and that probably is an opportunity for them to. To sell their stocks, and that's why I think it's not it's not uh, wise. It's not really uh, advisable to invest anything more than ten percent. So, what kind of investment will not move these equities in a direction which will be disadvantageous for the for us? And one one of the conclusion is that we shouldn't be investing anything more than one percent of the market cap, and the other one is that we shouldn't be exceeding ten percent of the daily transaction value. And uh, which one of either of them is higher? Now, when I 10% is really a conservative approach. It can go a little bit higher than that uh, for very small stocks like the PMD, but not from not for like a, a for a highly traded. And I'll talk a little bit more a little bit later about that. But this is just a guidelines telling that you know what uh, whichever is the higher we should be 
targeting that as the amount of investment we should be doing. So from an uh, allocation uh, uh, based on that information, we allocated the resource, uh, the uh, amounts or percentage of how much investment should be done. Which is, this is the market cap, this is the daily transaction value in millions, and this is the percentage of the overall transaction value that's happening uh, in this industry. Like 51% of the transactions is happening in ABBV. So our suggestion is based on various distribution and dividing that basically saying that 20%, 26% is going to be ABBV, 26% is going to be Altria Group and so and so forth based on, and this is completely based on what their market cap is and how much daily transaction value they have. And if you take a $3 million investment, that's what the distribution we would do in order to invest into these per, these stocks. And this is not new. Like I said, this is not new. There is there is already a, a, an ETF, a MJ, which basically has a asset allocation based on some criteria they have. And like you can see that EW has about 9, nine to 10%, Kronos have about 7% and so and so forth. So, but if you see the performance of MJ this year, it's about negative 39%, which is ridiculous, but, but that's what the industry is doing. It has no control on what, what basically has to be, uh, no control on, on each of these individual stocks. Now, if we take this plain, uh, uh, these stocks and basically invest based on what our suggestion was about 26% and so and so forth, our returns would be about negative 11% based on, on that, that particular model, which is still better than uh, the negative 39% of MJ. But, but that is where we have to step back and think about not just as a complete market cap daily transaction weighted investment. Uh, what we really want to understand is how can we implement an AI-based market cap weighted index? And what it really means is to buy and to sell based on the market signals, based on the intelligence which we have built and buy and get, sell and uh, create an optimized returns on that. Now, uh, we have been talking about this for like a couple of weeks. Like we have been talking for weeks from the time we have started this podcast specifically about the, uh, about the investment. And uh, let's, say, let's pick three of them, uh, ABVV, CARA, and HEXO. And, and, uh, if we scroll this, this is just the past slides, which we have that if it keeps scrolling, it has created various points where to buy and to sell. And uh, if you, if I summarize all of that, what I really want to say is that, that the AI based, if, if we go purely on AI based, each of these talks from year to date would have been these returns, ABVV 40%, Tara 23%, Hexo 16%. While versus if there was no AI based investment, these returns would have been uh, negative half percent, 45 percent, and 69 percent. So uh, you can see that that there is a huge difference from an overall growth. Now uh, you might want to ask, like, hey, you know what? Like, there is the non AI based is about 45 percent for Cara, but for AI based, it's less. And an optimist is going to look at Hexo and say, hey, you saved me about 50 percent. Right, you could have dropped almost seventy percent, but I gained sixteen. But a pessimist is going to say I could have doubled my return on Cara at forty-five percent. Instead, you only got me twenty-three. So why why the discrepancy? So uh, two points out of that. One is returns of forty-five percent versus twenty-three percent is a very uh, after-the-fact conclusion. Okay. The the second part of this is that uh, it's an intelligence. And it's an intelligence, it tries to identify the risk versus returns. And sometimes the risk versus returns is profitable and you invest into that and you get the returns out of that. But sometimes the risk is higher and intelligence doesn't want to invest into that and it doesn't invest into that. So, uh, so the whole idea about this is not just to uh, uh, find uh, the like always a positive idea, a, a positive solution, but it's also to find an optimal solution. 
which is that when it's riding, when it's in the upward direction, it might invest and it might get the optimized uh, returns on that. But the best part of the AI is when it's actually falling, it saves your money from losing the money. And that's what you're seeing here, that you know what, Hexo 69% down versus Hexo on AI is about 16% plus. So that's, uh, that. Uh, uh, even a pessimistic want to see that part of it, he would probably see that, you know what, it is 17% there, but when it's actually falling, it is actually saving me a lot of money. So, like I said, it's not, this, is, this is an uh, intelligence, just like humans can make mistakes about anything, it can also make mistakes, but I won't consider this as a mistake. It's more, uh, it's a conservative thought process, and when, the, when it senses that it has a probability of falling or high volatility, it tries to be safe and not be in a storm where it can go in either way. So it's great for systemic risk, but with systemic uh, speculation, it's not stupid. I mean, the other investors are, but our, our, our algorithm is, is too smart to make that money because it was a really risky bet. That is correct. That is correct. Yeah. So, uh, so that's a great question on that one. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and that's probably one of the reasons I put Kara in there for this, uh, for letting people know that you know what, the the AI based in intelligence is there, but it doesn't means that uh, it it ha it's, it doesn't means that it will like always gonna uh, have an upward direction uh, positive every time. Um, so based on that. Uh, here is the AI-based weighted investment performance for for this year, and you can see that it's about 31 percent, 31.47 7 percent annual return, but it's a uh, leveraged. And most of my investments are also leveraged, and that's why I would say that I think it's it's a great uh, approach in uh, in having an AI by, based in there. Now you can see that you know what, like I said earlier, that it's not that every time is going to be optimal. So here, like for like for example, um, uh, MO, it's basically it has a negative five uh, percent, about five percent return in the Q1, but it doesn't mean that you know it uh, it will always find a positive return. But what it can, what it will do is it will try to find the most optimal positive returns by hedging into multiple multiple stocks, and that's what the idea is that the uh, the ABVV, like you can see that every quarter it has a positive return. Uh, the the uh, Agilion, it has every quarter, it has really extremely good returns. And that's that's what the hedging part helps in the in the part that you don't put all your eggs into one basket, you distribute that into multiple things. And that's what the intelligence is about, is to distribute, to find the right buying and selling point and to get a positive return, which is about 31% versus a 39% negative for MJ. So, uh, and you can see the quarterly return, which are non uh, non leveraged, and the leverage would be probably twice, or how much leverage you want to use is probably the twice of that. And mostly, most of the funds they use about twice the leverage of that. So it'll be about uh, twice the price, twice the gains of whatever it's gaining in each of these months. Um, summarizing, so what I really want to tell is that market cap weighted index is very important if you are investing it. You can't put all your eggs into the same basket. You have to invest based on whatever the uh, highest return or whatever the highest risk uh, it, to mitigate that much of risk, and you have to invest according to that. Versus, and also, just having a weighted investment is not enough in my view. And having an intelligence around that, or artificial intelligence is, I think it's pretty good to identify when to buy and when to sell and hedge it between multiple stocks to get a positive return. That's what the idea is or to have as less loss possible around that. Any questions I for you, Josh, I would be happy to answer that. No, it looks good. Um, I just think that moving the market is easier than a lot of people think. I was working for a stockbroker back in the day called ShareBuilder, which is now a part of E-Trade. The idea was to build your shares, you know, $5 a Berkshire Hathaway, just in case you didn't have an extra $150,000 per share, you could buy $5 and build your share. And so when we did that, aggregated all of our client trades, once a week, we would send that munch to Pershing uh, and then they would execute that order, which could move the market. So that was up right. to them to make sure that they didn't. And so it's actually pretty easy to move the market, but there's a system in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, so we don't really have to worry about it, but investing in the right things like, you know, stocks that aren't over the counter or something that's in a, a big board exchange is, is the right way to go.
right? And uh, one of the examples of uh, moving the market is uh, during the lockup period. So most of the company, when they have an IPO, when the lockup period goes away, people, the employees start selling these stocks, the investors start selling these stocks, and the stock market starts going down during that time. And that's probably one of the time when the supply is higher than the, than the demand. And that's where the stock market goes down. So, so weighted and understanding and, and we're not, we're not in the business of moving the market. I mean, if we were in the business of moving the market, probably that would have been a different thing, but we're not in the business of moving the market. We're not in business of, uh, we're in the business of trying to understand which way the market is going and try to uh, invest accordingly. Yeah, with that predictive analytics, it makes it kind of interesting with the new support levels we saw last week and some of the the money that's floating around with people, you know, reallocating their portfolios as right. well as the earnings report from a lot of cannabis companies. There is going to be some shuffling around. Uh, so I'm always eager to see what happens. We're going to have to wait until next week to find out what happens next. That's right. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. I want to thank my guest, Rohit Srivastav, Chief Investment Officer and Portfolio Manager with Sirojan Banu Fund. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, for having me. By the way, if you enjoy the content, please show your support with the cushy gesture of $4.20 a month on The Talking Hedge's Patreon page. This will kind of help me spread the word. I've been asked to speak all over the world uh, from Toronto and Colombia, Spain, um, Miami, all over Tokyo. But your support's important to me. I haven't monetized the podcast. I want to be as authentic and transparent as possible. I want to avoid conflicts of interest uh, or even the perception of paid opinions. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe or pay me on the Talking Hedges Patreon page or don't and I'm out.